Okay, in today's reading, we're going to be looking at who is manifesting you. And I'm going to do three different readings with three different decks of tarot. So this is going to be group one, group two, group three. And I'm going to have the timestamps down below for each three of the readings. But I'm also going to have separate timestamps if you do want to watch the uh, card shuffling because I'm going to do uh, several oracle decks um, before getting into the tarot. So if you're interested in watching the card shuffling, I will have that also timestamp down below. But just as an added um, kind of like confirmation synchronicity to help you pick uh, which one of the piles is for you and who's manifesting you, I am going to draw um, one charm for each of the groups. All right, group one, you have number 75 with the record, the record player right here. Group two, you have the number 112 with, is that the Pi symbol? I'll have to look that up. I'll let you know for sure in your reading. And then for group three, we have the triangle with 139. Okay, if you're watching the card shuffling, I'm going to do that now. This is going to be group one. I need one for group two. Who is manifesting? Who is manifesting them for group three? Is manifesting group one, group two. <clears throat> Who is manifesting group three? Who is manifesting? Who is manifesting my groups? Who is manifesting? Who is manifesting my groups? I'm doing quite a few oracles for this reading. Who's manifesting my groups? And this is the last Oracle deck. Who's manifesting my groups? Let's see, did I get one of them? 
which one? Yes, I did. Okay, group one. So if you chose this deck with the number 75 with this little record, record player, the specifically this charm represents like replaying old memories, uh, rumination, reminiscing. So this has a lot to do with the past and memories. So right off the bat with this group, I'm specifically getting that this is someone from your past. So if you're not looking to be manifested by somebody from the past, um, I would highly suggest uh, picking a different pile. So we're going to look at your Oracle cards first. And um, oh, also, I forgot this card wanted to pop out the top um, tarot card. So we're going to look at it with the Oracles. I'm going to take it like an Oracle card. Um, and for this one, you have the Seven of Pentacles. I wasn't going to take any of the tarot um, for the oracle, but that one, like, it kept wanting to slide off the top of the deck. So, your first card, I don't know what order I'm going to do this in. You've got the Venom. You've got Full Moon with the number 44, Subconscious Awakening, and Full Illumination. That's what the card says. So you've got Virgo. This is the Five of Swords um, in this specific, um, what is this deck called? The Star Lore deck, I think. Yeah, it's the Star Lore. Um, I didn't take this as a tarot card. I took it as um, specifically with the constant constellation. So Virgo, they may be a Virgo or Virgo placements or sixth house may have be prominent for this person. You've got the Hero and you've got Primrose. Hero with number 36. You've got youthful love with this card. If I had a single flower for every time I think of you, I could walk forever in my garden. With youthful love and um, the number, um, the record, the record player. I'm really getting someone from the past. It may be like, I don't know. With this card specifically, I get like childhood sweetheart. The cuckaboo. Um, the Kakaboo card talks about a close, um, a close friend. So maybe this was just someone you were really close with in the past, or as a child or adolescent. Oh, I didn't realize that I drew two cards for <clears throat> your deck. So you got the um, or your group. You've got the Hedgehog and the Pond. Hmm. And then you've got a number 40 with rest here with the teacup and a book. Okay, group one. This, I'm getting, it's something interesting that stuck out at me as I'm looking at these Oracle cards is that in this Venom card, I don't know if you can see, but there's, it looks like maybe a wolf mouth. <clears throat> there's teeth and fangs. <clears throat> but there's a moon in the wolf's mouth, and it's, you can only see half of it. So it's like a, it's like half of the moon in the wolf's mouth. And then you have the full moon with subconscious awakening and full illumination here. There's a, okay, this is a very specific um, story that I'm getting. Um, just take it however it applies to you if you feel like this story fits for who is manifesting you. This, this person is from your past, like I said, and I do think it was someone that you were possibly like a, a childhood sweetheart, possibly somebody you were with, but most definitely a close friend here with the Kuckaboo. This is somebody that you felt at home with, but the Venom usually talks about, can talk about toxicity or kind of like lashing back. I, with the, with this full moon card coming out, I feel like your close relationship with this person happened before you were 
awakened. So before you had gone through any spiritual awaken, before you became more conscious, because this talks about subconscious awakening, full illumination, fully awake. I feel like you weren't awake um, when you were in a relationship, however that was in the past with this person. And with Venom, I'm really seeing that this person wanted that. I'm saying that you caused this person pain because you were not awake. Whatever that means for you, whatever pain you might have caused this person. But I'm not saying that this person ever hurt you, at least not on a, a grand scale. But I'm seeing that there was some sort of very significant pain that you put this person through. And they wanted to lash out. They wanted to bite you. They had that that hurt in them. They had that venom in them, but they chose to swallow it. So this person chose to swallow all that pain and that hurt instead of lashing back out at you. Because with the Virgo, this person, I think, from a very young age or just very early on was more awakened. And Virgo specifically with the constellation, which is what I pulled it for, represents someone who is really... I don't know the word fastidious fastidious is that the word holds very like kind of true to themselves they they aren't swayed by the opinions or like the very the very loud distractions from other people or what other people believe should dictate you know right or wrong or it, their kind of moral compass or code, this person always had like their own compass and they weren't swayed by other people. And so this person holds very fast to like their, their morals or what they believe in. And so I do think that they were more spiritually awakened than you were at the time. And because this person, it's got a lot to do with who they are, but also they love you. They loved you so much that they were willing to swallow that pain instead of lashing out. Um, if I had a single flower for every time I think of you, I could walk forever in my garden. And youthful love, it's, they've loved you since the past, since you were involved with them in the past. The love that they have for you did not change. And with the hero, I'm really seeing that as like confirmation that they did. And I don't think they, they swallowed that pain to be a hero. I think they swallowed that pain because they love you, not because they were trying to be the bigger person. I think this person is just true to who they are and they love who they love and they love strongly. Even if those people hurt them, they remain true to who they are, which is, and they originally loved you. And they still did. Like, this person has a very... I'm seeing this person is very strong because I don't want to say that this person is a pushover or you can walk all over this person because I'm not seeing that because this person does have fangs. This person has a bite and, and they can. They can bite back. They can lash back. They can defend themselves. But they chose not to in the situation when it came to you. And with the seven of pentacles, just it talks about like investment and long term. But when this comes to the oracle, which I'm trying to pull about like who they are, I really feel like this took so much. The pain that you caused them took a lot from them. And it I think it took a long time to get over. But it took a lot of strength. Um, but their love for you kept them from doing what I think they would have done in a situation had it not been somebody that they, they loved so deeply. Because with the cuckoo, who's manifesting you? They still see you as this close friend. They still see you as this close, like even family. I'm feeling like this person sees you as family, but I don't know if you've if you tried to repair or tried to reach out when it comes to the relationship with this person. But with the rest card, I'm really seeing that however much time, which time is very much subjective. But it seems like there's been a lot of time that has passed. But that person needed that time. But also, I'm really feeling like the moon card is representing you here. And I think that whatever separation or 
terrible ending happened between you and this person was kind of a catalyst to help you awaken because I feel like this person was more conscious and they may not even, they might not even call it that. So if this person, if you were to talk to this person, I don't know that they would say, yes, I was more awakened than you. I don't know that they know that terminology. I think they're just more of a, more of an old soul type energy. And it may be that you also resonate with being an old soul, but maybe it took you a little while of being in this specific body to like awaken and remember who you are. And I feel like whatever happened between you and this person really was a catalyst for awakening for you. And I, I did not do this specific reading today um, to read about twin flames, but that is a possibility with this person because um, with twin flames, it's someone you, you, you come in contact with the other half of you if you subscribe to twin flames. And that person is a catalyst for your awakening. So, you know, if that resonates, that just may be confirmation for you. But with the hedgehog in the pond, it's funny that these two came out when I meant to just draw one. You know, it looks like the hedgehog's looking at the pond. And the hedgehog wants to go swimming in the pond is the feeling I'm getting. But I don't think a hedgehog is a water creature. And I feel like there's hesitancy not... There's a desire to, but there's a hesitancy because it, like there's an element of danger. And I wonder, I wonder if you and this person have communicated at all or if this person is still afraid that you might hurt them with the, the half of the moon showing here. Like a fear that maybe you haven't awakened. Maybe you haven't um, completed your like journey of awareness and that if they come back in or manifest you too soon, that maybe you're not awakened. I don't know. There's a, just an element of a little bit of hesitation, not a big one. There's just this, I really see desire because the hedge, like I said, the hedgehog is looking at the pond, but I think they're still, this person is still in this rest mode and I think they're just one, they know they want to come back in. They know that they want to manifest you back into their life, but they're wanting to know that they're doing it at the right time. Okay, so we're going to get into the tarot now and see what the tarot wants to say. Okay, so <clears throat> group one's person that is manifesting them. Give it, oh, that one wants to come out. You've got Knight of Wands. Give us some more information about who is this manifesting. Just any more information about the manifesting group one in. Okay, so you have the Knight of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles. Any more information about this past person manifesting? You got the Page of Cups. Any more information about who is this past person manifesting? You've got the Ace of Cups. You've got the Three of Cups. Tower. You got the Three of Swords. I feel that one. 
you've got the moon. Okay, so I feel like that's extra confirmation that about the whole, the full moon and this person swallowing pain and it having a lot to do with your, your spiritual journey and your like spiritual like awakening because this person really was the catalyst for that for you. You've got the Knight of Swords. All right, let's do one more. You've got the hanged man. Let's see, I've got room for two more, so I'm going to get two more. Because I don't want to leave it on the... You've got the king of swords. And then... Ace of Swords. Okay. So, the first card you have is the Knight of Wands and the Ace of Pentacles. And then you've got the Page of Cups and the Ace of Cups. I feel like there's, this person is, it's like an internal battle. So like I said, with the hedgehog and the pond, like the hedgehog's wanting to get in the pond, but there's this hesitancy. And I honestly think there's, with this group, I'm feeling like there's not been a lot of communication. Like I'm getting the energy of like you, maybe you two don't even really know who each other are anymore because maybe so much time has passed and you've changed so much because I'm seeing that you have, you've gone through a spiritual like awakening but I'm not seeing like that there's been communication in the past because with that rest card I was just picking up that there's been like radio silence between you two and I think this person has an intuitive because like I said I don't know that this person would say that they're oh that they're spiritually awakened but I do think this person has a very strong intuition so I think they're feeling this pull to come back in and they are manifesting you. This person has very strong desire and very strong love. And like I said, this possibly could be a twin flame reading, but like I'm I'm not getting the energy that this person knows would know that you're their twin flame. They just know that they even with the pain that they've been through, they still love you. And I I'm really feeling like they could easily be with someone who's never caused them pain, but it they would still rather go through the work of getting over the past and the pain with you than doing this with anybody else. But there's this back and forth. So the Knight of Wands talks about like a desire and like a lot of energy to go forward and the Ace of Pentacles too, but then you got the Page of Cups and the Ace of Cups. So it's like, it's going kind of back and forth between like, for sure, I'm going to come in. And then it's like, I want to come in, but I'm not too sure. But then the Three of Cups comes out. And I don't always take this as, like, someone else involved. But I'm, I have a feeling that you're either with someone or this person thinks that you are. And right after that, the Tower came out. And I wonder if this person's waiting on it. Like, I don't know if this person's able to see you, like, via social media or if you're just around the general location of each other and they're able to observe you without actually coming in, you know, to your life. Or maybe you guys have mutual friends, something of that nature. But it's either they're waiting on you. No, you know what? With this Three of Swords, I really feel like this person isn't sure whether to come back in or whether to manifest their way back into your life right at this moment. Because if you are with someone else, I think there's this fear that they will cause like a tower moment. And I think they're wanting to know that you, like you wanted to get out of this situation with this other person without them being the cause that caused the ending. Does that make sense? 
and they're also wanting to know that you have you have awakened so like i said i don't know that this person would call would they would know to call you their twin flame but they're wanting i think they're wanting reassurance that a situation like the past is not going to happen where you are you're not awakened and because of that you're causing them pain I think they're waiting, they're wanting to know that you have awakened. And then we've got the Knight of Swords again with that. They're wanting to say something and then coming out as the hanged man. It's like they've got, it's right on the tip of their tongue and they're not, they're just, they can't bring themselves to say it yet. But then you also got the King of Swords and the Ace of Swords. This person will. They're going to say something. They're going to manifest you back. But I think they need to observe just a little bit longer. And if, you know, if the case is that you're with someone that, you know, you know you don't want to be with or you know you don't feel that way towards or is a toxic situation, I mean, regardless of this person, you know, you need to do what you feel is right for you and for your path. But I do see that there's that hesitancy. They don't want to come in and cause a tower moment for you and hurt you and be a source of pain for you. Um, they want to know that you have awakened on your own, I think. And I think they're wanting, if there is a third party, they're wanting you to make that decision to leave. Because with the Virgo card, like I said, this person has very strong morals and I'm really feeling like, you know, there's, I'm not passing any judgment at all because I know that situations are all different and we all work out our own life circumstances differently. But this person strikes me as someone who's not, they're not willing to even come in and insinuate wanting a connection with you if they know that you're with someone else or vice versa. Like if this person's with someone else, um, and maybe this is reference to them. Maybe they know that they need to um, have a tower moment in their own life and then it's going to be painful, but they know that this, this other person, if they are with someone else, is not who they're supposed to be with. But they have very high morals, I think, and this person, like if you feel like you haven't heard anything, it, this person, it's got to do with their moral compass. So they're not willing to even like slide in like this is not someone who's going to slide in your dms if they're with someone or if you're with someone this is someone who has very um high standards but i also don't want anyone to get triggered if because i don't know what happened in the past between you and this person that caused you to call that happened that caught where you caused them pain they're still willing to work through this and they have forgiven you um so if you feel like, oh, I've made too many mistakes and this person has such high morals, that's not it. They're, this person loves you and they're willing to go through like the darkness and work through that um, to be with you. So there's no judgment. They're just waiting for that. I think they're waiting for that sign that you have awakened fully and that they're not gonna be like doing anything that's against their moral compass, if that makes sense, by coming in. All right, group one, um, I hope that was helpful. And thank you very much for letting me read for you today and I'll see you in my next one. All right, group two. So if you chose this tarot deck with the little, um, this is the pi symbol um, with the number 112. And uh, the, ratio, the ratio, I had to look it up. I'm not a math nerd, but um, the ratio 314, is that correct? So this talks about complex um, issues requiring very complex solutions. So I'm just immediately with this getting the idea of something complicated. So there's something complicated with who this person is that's manifesting you. And I mean, there could be a math math could be a symbol or i don't know somebody that works with numbers could be significant but anyway i'm gonna set that right there move your tarot deck out of the way for a second because we're going to get into the oracles first and the first card you had 
is the empty room. Oh, let's see, I can't remember what order I went with the first group. You've got the saloon, escapism, good times, hideouts, feel good, safe haven with the number 39. And then I think that was the next one I did. You've got the six of pentacles with the hydra. This is the water snake. So I didn't pull this as a tarot card. I pulled it specifically for the constellation. And you've got the moon. You've got newsed. You've got the Liberator with number 27. You've got the Bellflower with Gratitude. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. And then you've got Sandra Cisneria, Cisneros, I think, with the body. Okay, group two, your person that's manifesting you, this is indeed complicated. So like I said with the pie, complicated um, problems requiring formulatic, form, formulatic? I don't even know if that's the right word. Requiring really tough solutions to tough problems. This... <laughs> With the empty room, I'm getting that the person manifesting you has been trying to manifest you for a long time. And I don't know if you know this person or not. I'm not. I'm getting a very sure energy because with news, this talks about being married or stuck, like stuck on someone. This person is stuck on you. So... And it talks about marriage and the past. I don't know. Only take it if it resonates um, because this card can mean several things. It can mean that they're just stuck on you. But also because it talks about marriage and this card, this specific deck is from, like has very old images on it. You and this person could have been married before. This could be an ex-spouse. But like I said, that might not be for everyone. But this person is for sure stuck on you. But with the empty room, I'm getting that like, they've been trying to manifest you for a long time, and they are stuck on you. But with the saloon and escapism, I'm getting that they're avoiding, they're avoiding doing some kind of work. And I'm specifically seeing with the moon, like, intuitively, there's some work they know that there's, they need to be doing. Because there's something very complicated about this situation of trying to manifest you back in. Which brings me to the water snake. So, with the hydra, the water snake... This snake um, in like mythology, um, this snake, Hercules was supposed to, it was supposed to kill. And every time Hercules tried to cut the head off the snake, the snake would grow like two more back in its place. And it was a very complicated battle because it took Hercules over and over figuring out um, that if they, I think, seared the, where they cut the snake's head off, if or heads off if they would sear it with like a hot blade or sword that it wouldn't grow back and give it time give Hercules time to actually be able to kill the snake and I just that is very complicated I feel like they're in um with the snake I don't know I'm getting this feeling that there is with the Sandra Cisneros which I think is how you pronounce it. I may be doing it wrong. Um, she was a poet. I had to look it up um, because I wasn't familiar with who she is, but she's a poet. But I ended up reading um, a, a quote that she had. Um, I don't know if it was a line from she had written, but talking about how we all desire fairy tales um, and stories 
to represent so that we can in representation of our fears to help us face our fears something along those lines and I feel like there's something this person's not facing within like you see the body here that's what I was gonna say I feel like there's something within that this person is not facing within themselves and it's like battling their own like dragons like that's what I'm seeing with the snake there's they've got to battle their own dragons but with the liberator coming out I'm really seeing that this person will this person will or currently is battling their dragons it's just really complicated so that definitely could be the case if this person was someone you were married to before um, like an ex-spouse and you cut ties with this person because this person had toxic ways or wasn't like evolving and maybe that person is now working on that or this person has set their sights on you and they're stuck on you and they know to be able to be with you they just have so much like They've just got dragons they got to battle. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. I feel like they're, they're starting with the desire, the empty room. They're, they're wanting to manifest you. They're, they're trying to do this. There's a desire for you, and this desire they have for you is helping them face everything from the past it's helping them make sense of today and giving them something to aim for i really feel like you're helping this person and i think without even knowing it you are kind of this person's target and you're helping this person figure out and make sense of their past and figure out what they need to do today to get to where they want to go because they have been they have been escaping but you're you're the catalyst for them but there's some sort of complicated like dragon there they're battling okay so we're gonna get into we'll get into the tarot now and just get a little bit more information about this person manifesting you So, give some more information about this person manifesting group two. Please give us some more information about this person manifesting. I'll take that one. more information about this person who's manifesting group two. No, we're not going to take that one. Okay. All right. So the first one you've got, you've got the hanged man. You've got the two of swords. You've got the will of fortune. You got the King of Pentacles. You got the Three of Swords. You got the Five of Wands. this that's manifesting group two give us some more information please Let's see we'll do one more one more okay all right well these both want to come out all right 
So we've got the Nine of Swords, Temperance, the Nine of Pentacles, the Seven of Swords, the Justice, we've got the High Priestess, and the Page of Wands. Okay, Gertrude, so I'm seeing that the person manifesting you has been going through cycles. So there's a lot of sword cards coming out, and I really feel like that is really confirming what we saw here with the snake, the water snake, that this person's battling a lot of dragons. They're doing a lot of inner work. There's a lot going on for this person that they're battling, but I don't see them giving up. There's just a couple of things I feel like for a long time, they were putting off making a decision, which we saw with that saloon card and the escapism. They put it off because it looks like they were waiting on, like, fate. I, I think maybe they just thought because they're stuck on you that fate would bring you two together. But I'm seeing that they, at some point, they have or they are realizing or did realize that they couldn't wait on fate, that they needed to do the work. And they're becoming this King of Pentacles. Or they have become the King of Pentacles. I, I'm feeling like that this is current. I feel like right here is about current energy. I feel like there's been a turn of events where they realized they needed to do the work and they needed to become someone different to manifest you. But there's been a lot of pain they're facing. They're facing the Three of Swords, the Five of Wands, heartbreak, conflict. Maybe the changes and the things they're facing are bringing conflict in their present day life. And they've got the Nine of Swords. Like, there's a lot of anxiety that this person is facing. A lot of fears. Just like we talk about facing the fears and slaying the dragons, you know, cutting the head off the snake. But they're doing it, or they will be doing it very soon. Because with temperance, that's they're alchemizing it. They're become they're they're taking what they were. They're taking the past and turning it into something different. And the nine of pentacles, they're they're going to be successful. But there's a big thing here with the seven of swords. I think this person, with it coming right under the king of pentacles, they want you to view them. Like, as the King of Pentacles. They want you to view them as... I think maybe, like, as they view you. And I'm not saying that that's not how you view this person. But I think they're afraid that you might look at them and only see their struggles. Like, only see the dragons they're facing. Only see all the, the trouble and the escapism and everything that they went through. And not see them as, like, this person who's putting a lot of work in. I think... They're just terrified that you're not going to see them that way. But with justice, I don't know, with justice, I'm really feeling like marriage somehow. Like, maybe you were married before or they... But also, they're wanting you to see that it's not going to stop this person. So, the fact that they're afraid that you might see them for just the pain that they've been through or the mistakes they've made, they're not going to let that stop them. With the high priestess, they really, they are honed in on you. They are focused. They are stuck on you. And they know what they want with the high priestess. And I see this with the page of wands. I'm seeing it as kind of a hesitancy. There's this... Because they're going to approach you. They're manifesting you back into their life. Or they're manifesting their, self, their way back into your life. If you guys have been involved in the past. If not, this is just a tr person who has been troubled. Who is very stuck on you. And because they are hesitant. Because they're afraid of the way that you're going to view them or perceive them. They're coming, they're going to approach, they're going to come in as the Page of Wands. Very, I don't know, with the Page of Wands. 
you see this like this page of figure this figure is like holding up a, um I guess you know what would be a wand but it's funny they're they're looking in that direction and with this specific they're holding it like this do you guys see the hand in this card so it almost looks like they're holding up like a like if I were to hold the card like as like a wall in front of myself like to to like shield my face I don't know, it's very interesting that it came out with the High Priestess. You see this, like, dream catcher thing on the antlers? I really feel like this person, they know what they want. Like, they're seeing with their third eye, and they know that they want you, like, on, on the inside. But they're putting up this, they're going to approach you, but they're kind of trying to hide themselves because they are still a, a little bit ashamed, or a lot of bit ashamed of something or how they'll be perceived. So they're gonna they're gonna come in with a hesitancy and a like, but that hesitancy is not because they're not sure of you. You have been the catalyst to help this person evolve and face their dragons and slay their dragons, but they're afraid of how you'll perceive them. And so don't take this person, like if this, you know who this person is, don't take their hesitancy as, like, they're, oh, they're not sure of me. No, they're unsure of how they'll be perceived. And they want you to perceive them as this King of Pentacles. They want to be your everything. Um, just like they, this person sees you as their everything. This is a very, the first two readings, so group one and group two, have been very, like, heavy. This is a very heavy energy. This is not lighthearted like I was expecting. But anyway, that is your reading group two. I hope that it was helpful. And um, thank you very much for letting me read for you today. And I'll see you in my next one. All right. So group three, if you chose this deck right here um, with the number 39 with the triangle, this is going to be a reading. I did have to take a break between the first two groups and your group. I was just like, I was really exhausted. Um, and it wasn't like... It wasn't like they were super dark readings or anything. It just, I don't know. I think when I pulled my decks out, I was like, I'm going to do this, you know, who is manifesting you reading. I thought they would kind of be light. And the first two were kind of heavier. So I'm not really sure what to expect with your reading. Um, I am leaving it open. But one the 139 um, with this specific uh, charm, it means trine. So trine. Sorry, with my accent, I'm not sure if but like a trine, a triangle. So it means like <clears throat> harmonizing energies. So right off the bat with this, um, the charm I'm already getting that this is more of a, I don't know, I'm getting harmony. So we'll see what comes out. I am going to um, look at your Oracle cards now. So the first card you had is the Shapeshifter. Your second card is the horizon with the number 18. Going the distance, what lies ahead, and broaden your horizons. <laughs> Excuse me. I ate an apple and I'm like kind of hicc hiccuping now. Okay, and you have the queen of swords um, with Libra. And now I pulled this specifically for the constellation, not for the tarot card. And then you also have... Uh, number 53 with the wreath. And then you have the explorer, the, the explorer, <laughs> the explorer, the explorer. And then you also have <clears throat> number 22 with the heart. You have iris, rainbows and messages. When it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. I don't know why. I have a couple of cards that say iris, but every time I see iris, I think of the, um, oh my gosh, the Goo Goo Doll song, iris. I love that song. Anyway, <clears throat> you also have Janet Frame with Belonging. And this, she's grasping a fish down here. I'm gonna have to look this up um, because I'm not 
familiar with Janet Frame. I'm going to have to look her up. Okay, so <clears throat> this is super interesting. Um, I think I'm going to have to read some of Janet Frame's um, writing. So she was a writer that um, she had a really troubled, like, childhood. And, like, she came from poverty. Like, really, like, you should go read about her if you feel so inclined. But she had really, a really difficult beginning in life and actually ended up being, like, institutionalized, like, in the psychiatric hospital for, like, a good part of her life. Um, she ended up writing about, like, isolation and, like, what it's like to face isolation and being excluded from society, which is really interesting. When I was reading that, gosh, what is the name of it? Um, where the Crawdads Sing? Where the Crawdads Sing? Where the Crawdads Sing, I think is the title of the book. Um, it's a book and now it's a movie. But the story was about um, a girl who is actually basically raises herself in the swamps because she's basically abandoned by her family. And so she grows up like isolated. And anyways, Where the Crawdads Sing is a great book, great movie. But anyways, it just reminded me a lot of that. So, and with Explorer, this talks about exploration and horizon. What lies ahead? Broaden your horizon. Um, yeah, broaden your horizons. There's, and the shapeshifter. And Libra, so when I was looking what about the meaning of this specific constellation, I didn't know that the Libra constellation, so here with the scales, actually used to be thought to be a part of the Scorpio constellation, and it was thought to be the claws of the scorpion, which I thought was really interesting. Because when you think of stereotypical, like, Scorpio versus Libra, they have similarities, but they're very different. Um, they're also like Scorpio is a fixed sign. Libra is a cardinal sign. Libra is an air sign. Scorpio is a water sign. There's distinct differences, but it was interesting that they were once thought to be the same constellation. And with when it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. I'm seeing that there's an element of dark and light with this person. A huge emphasis on balance and that this person has been through a lot. With the Janet frame, this is insane. Like, this person has been through a lot of darkness, a lot of heaviness. But with the wreath and Libra, because Libra is the scales, it's the balance. But it's a part of the, but it used to be a part of the Scorpio constellation. Like, I'm seeing that this person has been through a lot of darkness. But they've got this element of shapeshifter about them where everything that they've been through didn't, It didn't like, it changed them, but it didn't dictate who they became. Like this person has a, a huge capacity for like change and shape-shifting and alchemizing and still going through a lot of darkness, but still having such capacity for light, if that makes sense. So like somebody who's been through so much, instead of it turning them dark, like it makes them better. But on that same note, this person is still, it's not like they think they're better than anyone or special in that regard. It's just who they are. And maybe there is something about, um, if you've never heard it, the Goo Goo Doll song, um, Iris. Uh, I really like the remake uh, who is it? Sleeping, Sleeping with Sirens, I think, um, did a remake of Iris. Oh my gosh. Love that, um, remake. But anyway, that's just a, but Harmony with 139. Harmony, yes. This person has a lot of energy to them, like dark light, a lot of conflicting energy, but it, in them, they have harmonized all of this within okay so 
we're going to get into the tarot now and get some more information about this person who's manifesting you. This is this energy is really different from the first two groups. Okay. Can we get some more information about who it is that's um, manifesting group three? Who's manifesting group three? Who is it that's manifesting group three? Who is manifesting group three? I don't know how many I'm going to be able to fit here. I think these cards are too... Maybe not. Maybe they're not too big. Maybe they are. My hands are too small. I prefer to shuffle the other way, but I do really like this deck. All right, let's see if we can get one more. Of course, the last time I said that in the last group, um, I said one more and two came out. Oh, the high priestess. That's crazy. I think it was the last reading I did. The High Priestess came out in this exact position. But that's... Uh, anyway. Interesting little quinky dink. Um, you got the sun. You've got the... Se uh, seven of Wands. <clears throat> You've got the Hierophant. you got the Hierophant and the High Priestess. You've got the Page of Cups, the Four of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, the Four of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Queen of Swords. So all in all, like pretty majority positive cards. Interesting with the harmony. The only thing I'm getting a little um, bit from is the seven, the seven of wands. sun okay group three it was interesting because the seven of wands was kind of throwing me off and the seven of wands can kind of be taken in some different ways and um i love the star lord deck which is not what i'm using for this it was what i was using for this constellation over here with the libra and i was like i'm just gonna open it up and just see what this book specifically says on the seven of wands just because I think of all the tarot cards, Seven of Wands really can stump me sometimes depending on the reading. And look what the Seven of Wands is in the um, Star Lore. It's the Scorp uh, Scorpius, Scorpio. And we talked about that with Libra because I said the scales actually used to be part of, they used to think it was part of the constellation of Scorpio because they thought it was the Scorpions, um, the this part, the, the claws. And that's interesting. I really, I really feel like this person who's manifesting you has a very dark side, but also a very light side. Like I said, they harmonize those energies within, but I think 
the sun and the hair font is very, they're very positive. And this person, and the high priestess, this person knows that they want you. Like they have... But I think there's a hesitancy because of the Explorer and like I said, that Janet frame card because they do have a dark side and I opened it up to Scorpio. I wonder if they, there has, their, their hesitancy has been that they think they're too dark for you. But you've got the Page of Cups and the Four of Wands. This, this person is manifesting you. And the Ten of Pentacles. You have the Nine of Pentacles. But you've got the Four of Swords here. And Eight of Pentacles talks about putting a lot of work in. And the Shapeshifter. both queens coming out there's a very short energy and the four of wands it's like this person knows that you two are like they and the ten of pentacles like a solid foundation they know they know they are completely sure with you and the hair font and the high priestess these can be taken as counterparts. They are manifesting you. The only slight hesitation I'm getting is I think this person wonders about their dark side with you. I think they wonder, and I'm not talking about toxicity or anything like that. I just, this person has a dark side. I don't know what that means. And like I said, they bring harmony. They're harmonized. But I wonder if they... I don't know. I wonder... I think they wonder if their dark side is too dark for you. Because it's interesting. I don't want to, like, ruin the story of where the crawdads, crawdads sing. Like, if you're not into books, the book's amazing. But if you're not into books, like, go watch the movie Where the Crawdads Sing. Because there's there's a love story in that movie, book, whatever. Whichever one you end up doing. And, but there's an element, and I don't want to I'm not going to ruin it. But there's an element in there where, um, like I told you, the girl was, like, she was basically feral, like she was ra she raised herself, she lived isolated from society. And there's a love interest in there who's not sure, like, basically they're not sure if they can handle like her feral side. You know, the side of her that doesn't fit in, the side of her that, um, you know, the side of her that is isolated. And I don't know why I thought of that movie, but maybe that's pertinent, maybe go watch that. but. Maybe there's something in there in that book or movie for you, but and go listen to that Goo Goo Doll song because the person manifesting you, they're like completely sure that you are everything that they want. I think they're just the only hesitancy in manifesting you is that they're not sure if they would be everything that you want, if that makes sense. But they're sure of how they feel and they're sure of how they view you. They see you in such a, you've got two queen cards, the sun, you've got the hair front and the high priestess coming out together, the four of wands, the ten of pentacles. Like this person is all about you. I think they're just afraid you might not be all about that, that dark Scorpio type energy that they also bring along with their light side, but all right, group three, um, I hope this reading was helpful. Thank you very much for letting me read for you today, and I'll see you in my next one.